want to talk a little bit about uh, equilibrium and how it relates to uh, the subject of classical thermodynamics. Uh, first off, uh, let's talk about thermal equilibrium. Uh, the way I've defined it here is that uh, the time rate change of temperature uh, of, say, a given thermodynamic system uh, is equivalent to uh, the spatial gradient of temperature in that system, uh, and this is equal to zero. Okay, so there's no uh, temporal gradients, there's no spatial gradients, uh, the temperature is the same throughout the substance of the system and is not changing uh, with time. So this is our definition of thermal equilibrium. And uh, as a side note, this can lead us to what's called the zeroth law uh, of thermodynamics, so before, prior to the first law, uh, where say we have a system A that's at uh, a temperature T, okay, but uh, it has no temporal gradients, no spatial gradients, so uniform and not changing with time. And say we bring it into thermal contact with uh, system C. Now there will be, if the temperatures are different, there will be um, some energy transfer uh, in the form of heat until the temperatures uh, equalize. Uh, but once they do reach some equilibrium, um, there will be no longer be any spatial gradients or temporal gradients between A and C. They'll be in thermal equilibrium uh, with one another. Now say I perform a completely separate experiment on the opposite side of the globe. Um, and have a system B, and then bring it into thermal contact with C, okay? If B and C uh, are in thermal equilibrium, and A and C uh, are in thermal equilibrium, okay? And say, even if these experiments were uh, performed uh, completely separately, there was ins they were insulated, um, and there was no interaction with the surroundings, and C was at a fixed uh, temperature, and A and B were at fixed temperature as well, well, if A and C are in thermal equilibrium and B and C are in thermal equilibrium, we can infer from that that A and B are in thermal equilibrium, and hence uh, they're at the same temperature. And that, it, this seems a bit trivial uh, at this point, uh, but this will serve as the basis uh, for defining uh, temperature scales, uh, something that's going to be talked about uh, in uh, later videos. So moving on to uh, another type of equilibrium, uh, mechanical equilibrium, which uh, everyone should be familiar with from uh, either physics 1 or 2 or uh, statics uh, is essentially that there's no acceleration of the system. So the time rate change of the velocity vector, uh, which is defined uh, as the acceleration, is equal to zero. And from this we can infer that there is no net force uh, acting on the system, and hence the system is either at rest or moving uh, at a constant uh, speed. Now. If we have uh, a particular system that we're analyzing uh, during this course, and it's in both thermal equilibrium and mechanical equilibrium, the two types that we'll be considering, um, and say, you know, uh, the problem statement or, or even um, uh, prior somewhere in the textbook uh, says, you know what, we can assume that all other types um, of equilibrium can either be neglected or uh, these types of equilibrium do exist for the systems uh, that we're analyzing, uh, then together, uh, these equilibriums allow us to define uh, a thermodynamic uh, equilibrium uh, for our system. And with thermodynamic equilibrium, we're able to define uh, what's called a thermodynamic state uh, using thermodynamic properties. And this is, this is very important uh, in, uh, in terms of building your intuition uh, as we move from the course, uh, because what we're going to be doing is analyzing uh, systems that uh, start in an equilibrium thermodynamic state, uh, that are perturbed from that equilibrium and then arrive at a new equilibrium state. And um, using uh, information uh, about, say, the end states, we can calculate what happens in between. Um, or if there's uh, some information about uh, an initial state and what happens in between, we can calculate uh, the end state. There's all sorts of variations on this theme. Uh, but we need to understand uh, what equilibrium is and, um, and how we, we move from one equilibrium uh, to another type of equilibrium. And so what I've drawn on the side here uh, is just an example uh, using a ball supported by uh, different uh, geometric structures uh, within a gravitational field uh, to illustrate uh, different types of how we can perturb a system uh, or different ways we can uh, perturb a system from equilibrium, in this case mechanical equilibrium. So initially the ball is in mechanical equilibrium with the structure, say it's got a weight, uh, vector pointed down, and there's going to be a normal force uh, pointing up. Uh, so in the y direction, uh, it's, uh, it's stable, and uh, the uh, sum of the forces uh, in this direction is zero, uh, therefore it's stationary. 
But if we perturb the system, say left or right, and where there's no support, um, the way I've drawn this, it's, it's never going to reach uh, a new equilibrium. Um, so it's never going to find um, a location where the forces are going to be equal to zero uh, again. Uh, here's an example of what's called um, neutral uh, equilibrium. So say I'm measuring, or uh, say this level right here is uh, representative of the potential energy of the system. If I perturb the system, nothing has really changed in terms of potential energy. It, it will roll, and if I account for friction, it'll find a new spot, but on the same level. So nothing interesting really has happened if I'm considering uh, the potential energy of the system uh, relative to some datum. Um, stable equilibrium occurs when I have, say, a system in equilibrium. If I perturb it, it has a tendency to come back to the equilibrium uh, state, uh, which is converse to unstable equilibrium. And now if I zoom out, this is what's uh, going to be representative of most types of uh, problems in this course. Again, uh, we're not going to be dealing with mechanical equilibrium problems like this. Uh, thermodynamic equilibrium is what we're concerned with. Uh, but this is a good way to begin to start building intuition as to what's occurring uh, in the problems uh, that you're uh, going to be uh, encountering in this course. Uh, so again, we've got some kind of structure with some geometry, uh, some valleys, some peaks, uh, etc. in a gravitational field. And I'm going to start at state one uh, with uh, a bowl in mechanical equilibrium. But say I perturb that bowl and uh, give it enough energy to move over this little hump here. And then it finds a new well down here at two. So it's uh, in stable equilibrium at one. And we, it goes through some non-equilibrium process because we perturbed the system. We've interacted with it uh, energetically. And it finds a new equilibrium at uh, uh, point two or state two. So, again, I want you to make the, uh, uh, the connection that this could be a thermodynamic state uh, described by, say, pressure and temperature uh, or pressure and specific volume or any combination of properties. And what we're going to do is say, say we heat that system or we cool that system or do some, uh, some type of interaction with that system. We can move it from one equilibrium uh, to another equilibrium, which is going to have its own uh, specific combination of thermodynamic properties uh, that describes it. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.